It doesn't come up often per se, but in the past few months, I have mentioned homeopathy a couple of times, um, each time mentioning that it is an absolute pseudoscience, uh, but not really having the time to go into the details on it. And a few of you have written asking me if I could do a whole video on the topic. I've put it off because there's never been a kind of newsworthy hook. Homeopathy just isn't that popular these days. But I'm actually researching another video that'll be coming out shortly, and homeopathy comes up again. Um, and so I thought, wouldn't it be nice if in that video I can say, hey, if you want to know more about this, go watch this video I just made on the topic. So here I am. Let's talk about homeopathy. When I was in 21, 22 or so, I was this grungy little hippie living in Seattle in affordable housing, didn't have a good job. Obviously, I didn't have health insurance. And so obviously, when I developed a health problem, I couldn't afford to go see a doctor. So instead, I visited my neighborhood herbalist, naturopath, because, you know, that's the sort of thing we had back then <laughs> in grungy Seattle of the early 2000s. And this naturopath gave me homeopathy and I took it and nothing happened. It didn't fix anything. And I just blamed myself because I figured I probably just didn't explain the problem clearly enough because this is medicine, right? That a doctor gave me, right? That it's pr it probably usually works. And it wasn't until a few years later that I learned that alternative medicine is what they call medicine that doesn't work. And also I learned that there's a difference between naturopathic and homeopathic. I thought homeopathic just meant the same thing, you know, all natural ingredients. But no, naturopathic does refer, refer to a broader array of uh, treatments, which range from a, you know, a bit dodgy to full on bullshit. Homeopathy can fall under naturopathy, but naturopathy also includes things like herbs and vitamins and dietary changes and massage, you know, all of that stuff kind of falls under naturopathy. Homeopathy, meanwhile, is its own animal. The main difference is that homeopathy contains absolutely zero active ingredients at all. When you take homeopathy, you are just taking a sugar pill or water or alcohol or whatever. Um, not a single molecule of a vitamin or a pain reliever or anything is inside the treatment. This is what makes homeopathy, in my opinion, the second most ridiculous alternative medicine modality of all time. The first, if you're wondering, is therapeutic touch in which no one touches anyone and instead a nurse or someone who dropped out of nursing school waves their hands over your body and then says that they cured you with powers. But homeopathy is a close second. And to explain why, I will simply tell you the honest truth about what homeopaths themselves say. It's important to remember, I am not making any of this up. This is actually what they believe. Homeopathy is based on two essential truths. First is that like cures like. A medicine works when it causes the symptoms that the patient is currently experiencing. This is the origin of the word homeopathy. It's a combination of the Greek words for like and suffering. This means that, for instance, if you have an annoying itch, you should consume something that causes itching in a healthy person, like poison ivy. If you have cancer, maybe some x-rays would help. If you have a migraine, maybe try a falling anvil, etc. This idea was thought up by Samuel Hahnemann in 1796, after he heard a rumor that a particular kind of bark could cure malaria. He did not have malaria, but he ate some of the bark to see what would happen. And he found that he started to experience the same effects that malaria patients experience, a high fever, uncontrollable shivers, joint pain. Thus, he decided like cures like. 
this is a really great example of the difference between medicine and alternative medicine in that the alternative medicine guy stopped after one anecdotal data point and built an entire industry on it, while the real medicine guys went on to figure out that the tree bark contained quinine, which is toxic to the parasite that causes malaria, but delicious when paired with a good gin. So that's the first rule of homeopathy, like cures like. Hahnemann quickly realized that this first rule, while it made perfect sense, wasn't going to be enough because, I mean, obviously just think about it. If you drop an anvil on the head of someone with a migraine, that's probably on, only going to make their head hurt worse. So instead, maybe diluting the treatment would work. Maybe a very tiny anvil would work better than the big anvil. And, you know, if dilution makes the treatment better, then it stands to reason that diluting something even more makes the treatment even better. And if you carry that to its natural conclusion, the strongest possible dilution must be one far beyond the point where a single molecule of the treatment remains. In our migraine example, I, maybe we would reach the point where we simply draw a picture of an anvil on a post-it note and stick it to the head of the person with the migraine. Now, hold on, Rebecca, I hear you saying, surely you're being hyperbolic. Surely they don't actually dilute things down to the point where not a single molecule remains. And I'm sorry to inform you that they do. Hahnemann used the C scale to measure dilutions, with C representing 100. So a 1C dilution is one part of the original substance diluted in 100 parts of water or alcohol. 1% of the substance would then remain. The scale increases logarithmically, so a 2C dilution isn't one in 200, it's actually one part of the original substance in 10,000 parts of the solution, meaning 0.01% of the original substance would remain at 2C. 12C is the highest dilution in which a single molecule of the original substance is likely to still exist in the formula. Mathematicians accurately describe 12C as a pinch of salt in both the North and South Atlantic oceans. 13C would be less than a drop of the original substance diluted in all of the water on Earth. Hahnemann advocated for treatments to be diluted at least to 30C, which is one in 10 to the 60th power. A quick search of currently sold homeopathic products online, you can see that they commonly go from 30C all the way up to 200. Okay, Rebecca, you're saying now, you weren't exaggerating about that part, but it was really unkind to make that joke about drawing an anvil on a post-it note and sticking it on a patient's head. You're really poisoning the well with a tiny diluted drop of poison <laughs> with that ridiculous example. Hold on to your hats, guys. In June of the year 2000, the New Zealand Homeopathic Society released their quarterly newsletter with an editorial criticizing fellow homeopaths who were giving out paper treatments. If you run out of a proper homeopathic remedy, you can write its name and potency on a piece of paper and put it in a pocket or pin it on the left side of the patient's chest. Be careful not to write down too high a potency, it warned. But my laughter died when I read on and found this practice was promoted by a person describing herself as a classical homeopath and it was all dead serious. Even more scary were numerous reports from people claiming to have tried such paper remedies as excess fat, 30C to lose weight, insufficient fun, 30C to boost real estate sales, computer working 200C for a hard drive problem, car start 30C for a sick vehicle, courage 30C for public speaking, total recall 30C for an exam, and the more prosaic headache 30C, vertigo 30C, itchy feet 30C, etc. One person found Agnes Castus 30C gave ill effects, whereas Agnes Castus LM1 felt good. The woman I refer to is Eileen Nauman, who plans to run a course in New Zealand, and I looked it up, by the way, she has many books available on Amazon. For people who find writing remedy names on slips of paper too difficult, Jillian Lee, owner and manager of a business in England called White Mountain, has made for sale a device looking like a pocket-sized tape recorder into which the surreal homeopath had merely to speak the name of a remedy and its potency. Then lactose tablets in a well inside it will be made into the remedy thus spoken. So yeah, it's a fringe practice amongst homeopaths, but there are homeopaths out there 
writing down treatments on pieces of paper and claiming it will cure the patient. What's funniest about all of this is the idea that the mainstream homeopaths are like, okay, like cures like, obviously, dilute it till there's nothing left in there. Of course, uh, write something down on a piece of paper. Now, hold on, that is a bridge too far. Ridiculous. Uh, you know, have we no standards? <laughs> anyway, that's homeopathy. Uh, it's a bunch of nonsense. Now you know, and I don't have to stop to explain it in the next video where I mention homeopathy. Wow, I've just saved myself countless seconds. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks. <laughs>